Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the June 5th. Yeah, the June 5th. The one, what is today? Today's the uh, wonderful Wednesday. I'll figure it out. Sorry about that, folks. But today is the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. How about we have an extraordinary one? And, of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But most importantly, during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, don't worry. We've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. And in the Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show right now. The up 172 points, about seven tenths of a percent. To the upside, S&P similarly up 18 points. NASDAQ up a half a percent, 37 points. A little bit of a mixed market. Russell 2000 is flat, uh, 50 cents, and the semis are down about 10 bucks. That's about three quarters of a percent to the downside. Wilshire's up a half a percent. New York Stock Exchange up 44 points. Transport's up one full percentage point or about 100 points. NASDAQ Composite up spot volatility index headed in the right direction. Still not below the threshold level that you and I are looking for. Well, that's if you're a bull, which is below the 50-day exponential moving average. We'll take a look at that. Gold is up $4. Trade down to 13.32. Silver is up a penny. They're both in danger zone. We talked about it yesterday. We'll talk about it again. If we take a look at light sweet crude, that's trading out at 51.51. That's down about two bucks. So the upside, dollar wise, leading the charge. It's AutoZone up 29 bucks. CoStar up 15. Market taxes holding up 15. Shopify 14. Chipotle up about 12. To the downside, it's in flux. It's in flux is what it looks like, down 90%. 90%? Oh, my goodness. Really, with 22 million shares, what the sect happened? They've shelved something, some phase uh, two trial. This is a bummer for, for those folks that uh, last night went to bed and the stock was trading at 37 bucks, and now it's at $3.56. Not a single shareholder here really in a winning position. Holy shnikes. Also to the downside, Google's off about nine. Gravity Company down about nine. Uh, Pivotal Software down 42%. Eh, sounds like they've had a very unpivotal day. Uh, of course, I want to look at the things that you want to look at. The uh, question that is out here coming in from John. Um, yes, I'll do the 2 p.m. update, by the way, in the studio. Uh, the ES Mini is back at a high, um, he's looking at Apogee. Let's go take a look at the chart that John is looking at. That way, those folks that are in the den and even out of the den, we'll know what he's looking at as soon as I pull up the chart. Then we'll be able to go right to it. So right here, um, John is looking at this chart. And what he's picked up on is the uh, Apogee lunar phase. That is the point in time when the moon is furthest from Earth during the current cycle. Now, the next cycle comes in uh, perigee. I believe that is on Friday, and I don't recall the time off the top of my head. Um, but it's on Friday, and I don't recall if it's during trading hours or not. But regardless, John's question is, 
tell us how important or not 2831 is. Um, and 2831 that he's referring to is the exact price that uh, the ES Mini was trading at uh, when this lunar phase came in. However, this was also on a weekend, I believe. So this was either the close of Friday or the open uh, Sunday evening. So, John, the way for me to answer that question, how important... How important is it or not? With uh, you know, with the new phase perigee coming in, yeah. So it's going to be Sunday evening, if I'm correct here, after the market closes. Um, instead, the, the way that I'm going to look at the ES Mini is is via this way. First, just take a look at the actual daily chart out here. And the daily chart, what it shows to us: one, you had a gorgeous uh, Gartley buy pattern that confirmed yesterday. Now, the reason why I say that it confirmed was because you had that bullish reversal signal. You had that Three River Morning Star inside the ES Mini. Now, what price, uh, John, where price is at as we speak at 112 in the afternoon, it is above 2808. That is Stevie's red line. Now, when that line turns color green to red, when it turns colors from green to red, doesn't matter what the time frame is, it's an indication that we're going to see price and Stevie's line catch up to each other. When it turns colors, in this case here, from green to red, if the market was bearish, if the market was bearish, what should have occurred and it still can occur by day's end, is price would get up, test DV's red line, 2808, and reject that. So if by the contract close today, that's what happens, then the 2831 wasn't really the important number. It was 2808 that was the important number. However, this is the day of the test. And if price closes over 2808, what it suggests to you and I is price is going to continue higher regardless of where Apogee is at. Where to? 2845.50. That is the top of the new daily profile. It actually formed yesterday. I'll show it to you on this chart. This may be a little bit easier to see with the black backgrounds, and therefore you'd also be able to see the other profiles that also formed yesterday. So here we're just looking at the daily time frame charts for the four equity futures contracts. What we can see and what we can do with these profiles is we I can identify where the buyers are at, where support is at. Inside the ES Mini was 274. Once you get above the center line, which is 2793, pretty good indication you're going to go ahead and complete that move to the upside or the downside, in this case here, to the upside. So I would anticipate, if I were you, if I were me, this is what I am anticipating, is price is going to make a run for the 2845. What I don't know is whether or not price is going to go ahead and break through that level. We'll cross that bridge once we get there. If you take a look at the NQ, it's got a new profile. Price is above the bottom. Price here headed towards 72.86. If we take a look at the bullish structured daily profile inside the Dow, it's headed to 25.779. And inside the Russell 2000, its price target is 15.26. Now, what are the flies in the financial ointment that are out here at 114 in the afternoon that would say not so fast? The only two flies that I can see is the advanced decline oscillator reading inside the New York Stock Exchange. That is still just below zero. Center panel on my screen at minus 1.48. I'm more worried about that than I am about apogee or perigee at the moment. And the other element, the spot fix index. That gets below 1591. We're off to the moon again, Alice. We'll be right back. The TAS Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the Taz Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the Taz Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the Taz Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so let me just finish the, the answer to the question about the ES Mini and really what to be uh, looking for out there. And, uh, John, I know you value the uh, five-hour chart as, as I do, uh, even though our bars are different at times. But let's just go with the bars that I've got out here. And we can see that we had that TD set up nine count confirm at 9 o'clock this morning. That's using the five-hour time frame chart. Nine consecutive closes above a close for bars earlier um, I don't know this this next bar completes at 2 p.m. so we've got another 40 minutes I don't know if the high of um, the bar at 9 o'clock which was 28 24 50 I believe something like that 28 24 75 so John I would say this if if that high doesn't get taken out between now and 2 p.m. it's only a couple points away so I don't know if it will or it won't let's just go with it won't it doesn't then the nine count will be the high and if you see a price move above that then it says okay no top in place just a continuation pattern with price running up to its resistance line that was established at four in the morning back on the 22nd and that level is 2868 so that would be something else that you could watch over the next couple of hours to assist you with whatever decision it is that you might make regarding the es mini hope that helps you out and best of luck. Peter wanted to uh, take a look at the ES Mini in gold, and I believe that Brent also wanted to do take a look at gold. Let me read this. So Brent writes in, says, hello, Steve. I'd uh, appreciate your thoughts on the gold contract. Did a quick trade this morning. Bought some puts. Uh, just closed that position and uh, did well on that. And gold looked to be hitting some resistance. Uh, hoping you can cover the uh, TD counts as well as the uh, TAS level. So, yep, we can do all that. And uh, and uh, Peter in the Den wants, in essence, the same kind of information. So let's start with where uh, Brent left off. This is going to help Peter as well. And this is really uh, this is really about what you and I, all of us, discussed yesterday, the, the need to be careful right here during these next couple of days. Now, right now what we can see is that uh, gold hit. It got above 
Uh, but this is the importance of resistance, understanding breakdown areas, breakout areas out here. And so what gold has done so far on its daily time frame is it's made its way back to where it had broken down. Now, that breakdown area that I'm using here is at 1340. I'm not using the actual high out here. Uh, the high that came in, let me just get my crosshair going. Well, let me try to get my crosshair going. Here we go. Here's the high on February the 20th. And if we take a look at that, that also is resistance, by the way, because this had the Three River Evening Star. Remember, we looked at the Morning Star and the ES. Here's the Evening Star pattern out here. And uh, so certainly that is some resistance. But the real breakdown came, or I will say that the real breakdown came on a daily basis at the 134040 level. So today is going to be day number nine. I mean, gold would have to close below 1286, give or take, and I don't see that taking place out here in order for today not be bar number nine. Bar number nine closing below resistance at 1340.40 is not a good thing. It's not a guarantee, but I can tell you it's not a great thing. No, let me restate that. It's a lousy thing out there, and so you've got to be careful. Well, you don't have to be careful. I would suggest that you be careful and watch this closely. Now, today you've got a shooting star, but that's 121. I don't know if that's what the candle will be. You know, it's the opposite of a hammer candle. If you do get a shooting star today, the beautiful thing about that is they either work or they don't 90% of the time. What I mean is that if they work, you have follow through the next day and you start to see price move lower, and that would be a huge indication. But we don't know if it's going to be a shooting star candle or not come the end of the day. So, Brent, you're absolutely right. Right? So today's going to be the nine count. Today will be the nine count out here. And that says be careful. Now, it just says be careful. I'm not saying unload or sell if you're long. I'm saying be careful and be aware out here. If, on the other hand, if we take a look at just a 30-minute time frame chart for another quick signal as to what gold's intentions are, here what I'm looking at is on a 30-minute chart, the support level, the breakout, the most recent breakout level inside of gold. That took place right here on this bar at 10.30 in the morning, and that was on June 3rd. That was yesterday, and that low is 13.2040. If price were to close below 13.2040, okay, you've got one more breakout level. But if it does close below that, that would be trouble. Now, trouble may only take you down to 13.1090, but if you get below 13.1090, que sera, sera. The move in gold is over for the time being, and some type of retracement would be underway. I'm unwilling to make that call right now because support has not been broken when I take a look at the 30-minute chart. Pulling back to support or the breakout area is something normal. If you pull back that to that level and the buyers don't rush in again, then that support is now gone. Now, you can see that on a 30-minute basis, well, you can't see, but maybe you can see it's in the process potentially of forming a setup nine count as well. But we've got an hour and a half or so, two hours before we get there, so this count may not, um, may not uh, take place. But what's not going away is the breakout level. And again, that price point is 13, 20, 40. So Brent, I would use that as a key to understand everybody else that is out there. You, Peter, I would want to understand if gold is, if gold is below that level, the sphincter muscles ought to start getting tight for those bulls out there inside the mining equities and inside of the gold. And then to boot, uh, what we've got going on on the five-hour time frame is that price continued moving higher. We spotted this pattern yesterday. It just began forming had just begun forming, and now that it's formed during this five-hour time frame again, which ends at 2 o'clock, you now get that bearish reversal signal. Now, what Price did was it came right down to the top of that profile out there, old resistance, that perhaps is new support. It's another reason to not unload just yet. But if you start to see these levels of support fail, in this case here, it's 1333.50, is the actual, um, it's right around 1333. 1333.40 is where price is trading. So right around 1333. A close below that on a five-hour basis says price could come all the way back to its breakout level. But first, it would come back to 1316 and 1307. So that's really, this is what I see on a daily basis. A five-hour chart says beware. The 30-minute chart says not just yet, but at least you've got a price point. It's not that much further down to be paying attention to. With regard to what traders of gold are doing across the globe, Peter, um, you know, um, well, first, 
take a look at this chart here, traders of gold in pounds. You don't think that the folks over in the U.K. or at least big money is trying to find ways to get the heck out of Dodge out there? And uh, they've been able to push gold up above prior swing points, January swing points out here. No, not even close to January swing points in dollars. Right. Well, I, I guess it's close, but the January swing point in dollars. Well, it's really the February high out here, 1360, but hasn't taken it out. So what's going on as far as this would be the savior for bulls out here. Uh, but at this stage, gold and all the currencies really kind of stable doing the same kind of a thing, so to speak. I would really watch those levels that we took a uh, look at uh, just a few minutes ago. So, Brent, uh, Peter. Uh, everyone else, I hope that that assists you with regard to our analysis of what uh, Goldilocks is uh, doing uh, as we speak right now. So we've got another question here coming in, one from John in Sarasota. Uh, I would love to hear from you by voice, 877-927-6648. Email steve at tfnn.com. Just put radio show question up in the subject heading, of course, inside the Tiger's Den. Any ping will do. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Um, John in uh, Sarasota writes in and says, Hey, Steve, hey, John. Uh, is, is now a good time to short Netflix. NFLX 
is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's go peek in on Netflix, John, see what it is that you are looking at here. Currently priced at about 355.73. So it's trading right into the top of its uh, brand new daily profile out here. So it's right up against a, a resistance zone. It's actually trading just above it, John. Uh, that level is 355.49. You're trading at 355.70. So here's what I would say is that if you see a close above 355.49, the uh, very simple answer to your question is no. No, no, no would be the answer to your question out here based upon profile information. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, price is trading within the weekly profile right at that point of control in the 355.62 area. In the uh, monthly, uh, looks like uh, where this is headed to is about 374.24. So let's go to the other charts, see what kind of signals we have out here. What was uh, what was the message yesterday? So I don't see any kind of pattern out here. I just see really as con sideways consolidation uh, that is in place. So um, what was the topping signal? So the bottom signal was pretty easy back here on the 26. A TD set up nine count, a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Um, I've not seen anything necessarily here at the top, at the most recent high that we've had. Um, not seeing a pattern for you to the uh, downside. So, and price above Stevie's red line at 350.71. Um, John, it looks to me like uh, this wants to continue to move higher. Netflix. Now, how we could put that together is just simply come take a look at the uh, the NQ. And if we take a look at the NQ, what we see here is prices above support headed towards potential resistance around 72.86 or 73.85. But if we pull over the daily time frame chart here for the NQ, what you're going to see is a, a beautiful set of patterns out here. Wave number seven, that's letter G, just simply from the highs to the low. TD set up a nine count. That uh, was the bar following bar nine. Thus far, that has been the low. Um, where the ES mini is above Stevie's red line, uh, the NQ is not. But this would suggest to me, because you've got these bottoming patterns that are out here, it was an A to B equals CD to the downside, also a Gartley buy. Uh, price, uh, watch for 72.55 inside the NQ. Above that, you're looking at probably the run to 73.85, the top of that new box out there. Maybe higher, but those become the initial targets as we speak right now on June the 5th. Yeah, uh, God, days just kind of come together so quickly these days. Um, so, no, I wouldn't take Netflix as a uh, short um, not just yet. I mean, the general index itself looks like it's made a significant bottom. Now, J John, this is John in Sarasota. Everybody else, close your ears. I don't want you to. I don't want you to hear this because I don't want to screw up your thinking. Uh, but we just made Gartley buy patterns about almost across the board, uh, indice-wise out here. Um, th this is not unusual in the unfavorable seasonal cycle to make a bottom. Usually, it's around June the 24th. This year, it came in early. We kind of kind of use those dates as guidelines, not as it has to happen exactly. Oftentimes it does, but we, it doesn't have to. And so, John, when the market in the summer, not the summer, but I mean this unfavorable seasonal cycle, especially when it works, even when it doesn't work, but when it does work out here as it is now, as it has uh, in 2019, uh, you typically see a significant bottom in June that takes you up for about four weeks into July. That's what's knocking on the door right now. That's what yesterday and the day before was all about it was a it was a hard rap on the door a hard rap on the door look don't believe me i don't want you to believe me i want you to believe the charts and what they say let's go take a look at the charts let's just swim, simply switch to my index view out here and let's just take a look at them one at a time uh, we took a look at the es mini let's not do that and take a look at the s p 500 let's take a look at the dow Take a look at the Dow. Beautiful bottoming pattern here above Stevie's uh, red line. There's no reason for the Dow to not go out and, and at least hit its objective, which may only take a few days, quite frankly, and then continue even higher. This, this bottom that is in can last, I guess the point I was trying to make, can last for three to four weeks. Should last for three to four weeks. Should last for three to four weeks out there. Take a look at the Russell 2000. What did it do? TD set up nine count out here. 
And then Basil Chapman talk was happening with wave number D, wave number four out there. And at that stage, that's when other things can happen. Other things are happening. They're happening right now. The Russell 2000, it wants to continue to move higher. Made a nice bottoming pattern. How about the NDX 100? What did it do? I don't know. I mean, because that's one that was getting trashed and thrashed, right? By, by about everybody. Makes the TD set up nine count bottom. 72.47 is the number there that it needs to clear. So it's not out of the woods just yet. The uh, NASDAQ 100, not like the S&P and the Dow and the Russell 2000. But if those can get out of the woods, this can get out of the woods too. But it won't get out of the woods until it gets above 72.47. That's the number to be watching there. Still, nonetheless, it made a bottoming pattern out there. I love the fact that I listen to the folks on Bloomberg TV and on CNBC, and they're all trying to answer the question, why did the market bottom? Yet on Friday last week and on Monday this week, we knew about these patterns that we were looking at that are just simply giving us the signal that a bottom is coming. This is Paul Revere riding through the TFNN neighborhood and every other neighborhood just screaming at us what's going on. It had nothing to do, zero to do. I know they're looking at it with Chair, Chair Powell out there. Really, folks, it, the market was up two or 300 points before uh, Powell said whatever he said, which is nothing more than he's already said in the uh, past. New York Stock Exchange completes a uh, A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. It's well above Stevie's red line. It's just not above the, it, it's the market breath that is the only cautionary sign uh, that is out there as we uh, speak. Wilshire 5000, it's above. The transports here, take a look at the transports. They make a beautiful Gartley uh, buy pattern. Uh, it's above Stevie's red line at 10.065. This, too, wants to continue to move higher. These are just the patterns that are out there. Uh, they're the patterns that are just simply easy to see. The semiconductor index. Again, this has nothing to do with the, the, the Powell. And so we don't, you don't need to know what the, the Fed is going to say next out here. You, you just don't. How is it that the semiconductors, when they did form their most recent high, it happened to be wave number seven, letter G, and a TD set up nine count was bar number eight. And then, by some strange coincidence, uh, it makes its bottom with wave number seven, letter G, and a TD set up nine count, and it does it on bar number eight. These patterns repeat over and over and over again. And you and I, we look at them on short term, longer term, intermediate. And if you don't, if you're not familiar with these patterns, that don't make this stuff a secret. Just come learn it. Just sign up for Mastering Probability. You've got archive workshops. You'll be able to figure that out. That combined with the uh, newsletters each day and all the charts, you'll be able to pick up on it. Uh, the light bulb will go off. So all of the indices out here, making beautiful bottoming patterns. This is not a one day wonder. This could last for weeks. It's normal during the unfavorable seasonal cycle process. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 180, S&P 19. Let's go out to Philadelphia and speak with uh, John, uh, a.k.a. Z, in our uh, Tiger's Den. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing on wonderful Wednesday? I'm doing very well. Uh, even better watching you nail the bottom in the, uh, the S&Ps. That's terrific. Uh, let's see if it holds. Let's see if it holds. So, yeah, I wanted to ask you, if you could give me some assistance on silver, please. Uh, we have spoken live on your show uh, in the past two weeks uh, where I was looking for evidence or, let's put it this way, reasons to think silver could rally uh, and was having that discussion when it was under 1440. Uh, so um, I'm long. I uh, had both futures and calls uh, book gain on uh, on the calls holding the futures position from right down near the low. So that's uh, that's where I stand. We've gotten a rally of 75, 80 cents thus far. We've pulled back. Uh, I would like to be prepared to uh, double or triple my position size if I can find a pullback spot where I can manage my risk. Uh, can you help answer that question? Where is the spot to be looking for to add to a long position? So, sure. I mean, let's let's try to figure that out. Now, uh, before I do that, just want to be able to throw a, a, an important piece of what I believe is an important piece of information out to you. Now, this will be more important to come Friday's close out here. And this is the weekly time frame chart uh, for the uh, July contract uh, for silver. And what you can see here is right now price is taking on Stevie's red line. That number is 14.756. We're at 1479. If price were to close below that level, that acts as a uh, resistance area. If price were to close below that level, that would be saying, okay, to me, price is going to pull back. Expect price to continue to pull back further. Now we can go try to figure out where. On the other hand, if on Friday price closes above this level, again, I'll state that level again. Right now it's 14.756. The number will change by pennies or so between now and Friday, depending on what price actually does. But right now that's the number that we're looking at. It's been resistance uh, for the past couple of months out here since the end of March. And so that would be something that you would want to look at with regard to let's say that um, let's say that let's say that on a short-term basis that you're just looking on a short-term basis to try to identify a spot to uh, get long watch the 30-minute time frame chart 
which looks like it uh, may be in bar number eight of the uh, nine count out here. And uh, look for silver to make one or two pushes lower, uh, one between two and 230 and two th or 230 and three, just to get that little bit lower low with bar number nine or the bar following bar number nine. And then for price to trade above that level, that could be one possible entry point if we go down to a 30 minute time frame. Now, what I didn't show there were the 30 minute profiles. I'll change this 60 minute to 30 minutes out here so we can just understand. You can see prices trading below the bottom of that box. It's also below the bottom of the 120 uh, minute profile. And so, John, this would suggest to me uh, that if I look at the five hour time frame, there's a new profile that's trying to form. It just doesn't show up on my screen right now. I know that it's trying to form because of the key reversal session and the orange bar that it is at the moment. This would say that the silver could or should pull back to about 1469 to 1465. I would say that would be your entry point, right around those levels. If price closed below 1465, then you're looking at about 1455 out there, the bottom of that uh, profile. The daily That's profile- funny, Steve, I just have to stop you there. I had, uh, I had thought through the answer, my answer to the question I asked you Okay. And uh, and uh, my thinking was, I have actually I'm working a buy order to buy uh, an additional uh, July silver contract at 1467, <laughs> uh, risking down to 1454. Uh, so the numbers you've just are uh, mentioned there kind of yeah. dovetail with what I was seeing. So I uh, uh, I was looking to see if that might occur some uh, confluence of individual ideas from different tools, which apparently they have. Yeah, so I'd, I'd stick with that. So I'd, I'd stick with that five-hour chart. Now, what I want to do here is pull over my other five-hour time frame chart. And so I'm just curious what the wave count was on the way up out here, where we're at, um, although that's a pretty wide-ranging bar. So only wave number five. Um, but, uh, you know, you've, you've got to be careful. This current session that we're in that's going to end at 2 o'clock, uh, look, I think I think your target levels are spot on. That's that's what I would stick with. The reason why, so you know, this is a the five hour chart, John. The current chart is a um, is a is was a bearish structured box. Once price got above that level. Well, actually, if you take a look at this, it was always above that level. The first test down into it took place at about 9 o'clock in the morning. This was yesterday, I'm assuming, June 4th, yeah. And so that's that 1465-ish, 1467, I think you said. That would be the level. And then the bottom of that profile is at 1457. Now, the five-hour time frame chart, John, would say that the breakout really took place at two o'clock in the afternoon on May 31st, and that low is 1449. So, you know, just kind of, I know you'll continue to watch the silver and the shorter term time frame and take a look at the bars and how they're trading, but those are the numbers. The, what lines up most with what you came up with is the, is the five hour time frame chart that I use and its profiles and other patterns. Steve, thanks for your input, I appreciate it. My pleasure. Always good to talk to you. That was John in uh, Philly. Um, let me see what other questions have come in. I know there was one uh, that was, uh, I think, and I apologize, I, uh, it's off my screen, but I, it, the question was, where's an entry point on HYGS? So HYGS is a hydronics corp out here, which is trading above daily, weekly, monthly, even the bottom of its quarterly profile. Now I'm going to open up the monthly time frame. Ooh, ooh, okay. So this thing has been in a real consolidation out here, um, which it's really trying to, it's right, right at the top of the consolidation. So uh, I think it was Pat, Pat S. that might have written in about it. Um, so a good entry point is going to be the bottom of the consolidation. And that's going to be at uh, 380 until the top is broken. And to, to show you the consolidation pattern, let me do this. Let me just turn off these profiles for a moment. There we go. And then let's just grab a rectangular toolbox out here. Uh, and as we do it, the bottom's really well defined. I think the top is well defined too. And it, and it looks something like this. And so here's your consolidation pattern. And typically the place that you don't wanna buy into something is at the top of the consolidation. 
Now, look, you could get a break of this consolidation. If you do inside, this is the monthly chart we're looking at, so that's a good thing. And if you do get a break of the consolidation of the upside, well, your price target or your measured move gets you into about $20.41. Now is not the time, Pat, to get into the long trade inside of HYGS. As far as entry points go, 1125 to 950. I know that's kind of a wide range, but that's what I've got as we speak right now. We'll take one more quick peek at it when we get back from this break. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, uh, Pat, I, here's the deal. I don't really have a good entry point for you on HYGS. And the reason is, one, I don't have a topping pattern on the daily other than the mere fact that we're in the top of the consolidation. And I'd want to see some type of bottoming signal or pattern if the top of the consolidation holds. Uh, maybe price gets all the way down to the bottom. Maybe it doesn't based on some other patterns out here. But I think you've got to um, – I can't give you an answer because um, we're up at the top of the consolidation. Hope that that makes uh, sense to you. Uh, the last request coming in is a request to take a look at uh, Marriott. This is for Jeff L. And um, you're long Marriott out here. So let's go take a look at what Marriott is doing. Uh, it's trading above the daily, below the weekly box, and uh, inside of the monthly profile out here. So as we take a look at Marriott, let's try to see what took place as this was making a bottom. Any past 
pattern that sticks out to us out here, uh, Jeff? And uh, the answer at this stage is no, other than price had pulled back to a level of support. Now, price is flirting with Stevie's red line. So a close above it yesterday, the pullback today has been a test of that level. Uh, and so it's right around where it's trading right now, maybe down a penny or two, a couple pennies, you're at the 120. 126.91. Uh, as long as it stays above 126.09, I think you're okay out here. I just don't, unlike the markets, the indices that you and I looked at that have those beautiful bottoming signals across the board out here, I don't have that same thing inside of Marriott. It doesn't mean it won't move with the general market. I just don't have one of those uh, great bottoming signals uh, for you. So you're long. I don't know where you're long from out here. Um, I think uh, just don't let this close below 123.23 out there. That would say you've got lower prices uh, coming at you. So thanks for writing in. Thanks to everybody who takes the time to uh, write and uh, call in like uh, John did out there and uh, everybody else inside the den. So have a uh, wonderful Wednesday, a good day for just a little bit of pasta. Some beautiful, let's go with the 100% for low Italian wine. Maybe a bottle of Petrolo. That would be a beautiful thing. Something to think about. Take care. Have a great afternoon.